The fourth large uh, Hadron Collider experiment, so the, the fourth LH experiment, is called ALICE. It's just in simple words, what ALICE is doing. The question is, <coughs> if you see now the history of the universe from the Big Bang up to now, at some times the proton and the neutron were uh, formed and uh, the quarks and the gluons were confined after that inside the proton and the neutrons. But from the, this was not immediately after the Big Bang. There was a phase before where the proton, no, where the quark and the gluons were formed a plasma. It is a quark-gluon plasma. And of course, we are not capable, we have not beam of, uh, of quark and gluons that we could use to create this plasma. So what we are going to do in the laboratory is starting from proton, neutron, and even from heavy nuclei, for a moment, we will give them so many energy that for a very short time, they should go through this phase of quark gluon plasma. So what we will do in, in, in the lab is some going to quark gluon plasma, and of course, immediately it cool down and come back to the normal matter. Now, the quarks and gluons interact via the strong interaction. So this may be for some time some equilibrium in the matter. The system expands, but cools down, and at the end, quark and gluons, which cannot be uh, free particles, must uh, be grouped together to form hadrons or particles that we can observe in the laboratory. This is one scenario which is a kind of toy model, but it gives you a feeling how with normal nuclei, we'll try to come back on this very uh, early phase of the quark-gluon plasma. So, you could imagine that already when two protons collide, you have many particles. When it is two nuclei of lead, you have even much more particles. So it must, you need really a dedicated detector for that. This is a visualization on one could be a, a, a collision between two protons, a collision between two lead. You hardly see the tracks with the, the number of pixels of the screen. So a special detector has been built called ALICE. I don't want to go into detail, but just to, so, to say that this detector is well tuned to measure the collision between nuclei. So to summary on the LHC physics goal, the search for the standard model, so there are, you can identify up to five topics. The first thing is to find the X particle, as I said before. The second thing would be to find physics beyond the standard model, which should exist and we have, we have good indication that some signature should appear in the TV range, the, the energy available in the large Hadron Collider. We should also make precise measurements of well-known quantities because this precise measurement will, will bring some constraint to the new physics we are looking for. There will be B physics with LHCb and this phase transition in, with ALICE, as I mentioned before. So, at CERN, already uh, at present now, but even later when the LHT will run, and I just can uh, say again, I don't remember if I already mentioned the date, that the LHT should start running in 2007, but when the Large Hadron Collider will run, there will be still possibility to do some physics in parallel, not, not that more, because the priority is clearly for the Large Hadron Collider, and I will, would like in the next 20 minutes give you some feeling of what could be this physics. First, there is a physics that we can do with the SPS, this proton physics, and I will just illustrate this one. I will skip uh, the current physics and heavy ion physics. Second, with the PS, it will be possible to have a new beam of neutrino. I will explain that in a moment. Third, the nuclear physics program as what question before, will carry on all during this time, and very likely, we will carry on the production of anti-heat hydrogen to make some very basic measurement. Fixed, uh, the program, which is in addition to the LHT, will be used by using the PS or the SPS, as I said before, and for instance, from the SPS, 
it will be possible, it is actually even going, it is even running at present, to extract some particles, some protons, which, which will be, which will uh, generate pions, which will generate muons. Though we will have a beam of muons going somewhere in this place where uh, stands the compass experiment. And so it's clear that when the LHC is running, when the SPS is not used to inject particles in the LHC, the, the SPS can be used to send some particles in the compass experiment. So what is the physics uh, which uh, the compass experiment is addressing? Uh, to explain you that in a simple words, I just would like to come back to this uh, notion of constituent of the proton. In fact, the proton is not simply, simply made of three quarks, up, up, down, as I mentioned before. They are the, uh, what we call the valence quark. There is also a sea of gluons and short-life quark-antiquark pairs. Now, the proton, and I mentioned it before, has this intrinsic angular momentum called the spin, which is equal to one half. And naturally, you could imagine that the spin of the proton is a sum of the spin of the three quarks. That was the naive uh, view of uh, this problem, but the reality is a bit different. In principle, just for conservation of angular momentum, the spin of the proton, one half, could be the sum of the, could, could be due to the quarks, could be due to the gluon, and could be due also to some global angular momentum of the, co of the elementary particle within the proton. Very naive way, as I say, would say this delta sigma should be one. In other words, the spin should be carried by the quarks. It's a bit less naive, but still with crude approximation, the previous speaker with some uh, American colleagues predict that it should not be one, but 0.6. And the reality, which unfortunately you cannot see on this screen, so I will tell you, is that this delta sigma is something like 0.12. Sorry for the quality of the color. It's, it's a small technical problem. So in other words, up here, what uh, was called some bit more than 10 years ago, the spin crisis. So the, who, who is going to the spin, to the proton, this value of one half? If it is not the quark, it may be the gluon. And it is exactly these things that Compass is looking for. I move now to another topic, the neutrinos. The neutrinos are the most mysterious of the known particles of the universe. They are elusive and really full of surprise. They interact so weakly with other particles that, for instance, trillions of them at each moment pass through our body without leaving a single track. So they are extremely numerous, but they interact very, very rarely. For many years, we thought they had no mass, but recently, especially uh, the Japanese uh, experiments have demonstrated, but not only in Japan, there have been other, other places in the world, in Canada, and uh, also in the, in the Grand Sasso in, uh, in Italy. Uh, in many places, it has been uh, demonstrated that <coughs> they have a tiny mass, and th the consequence of this tiny mass is that they oscillate. What does that mean? Try to say it in a simple word, what means oscillation of neutrino. With a beam of protons, you can produce some type of, protein, of neutrino called the neutrino muons, the one which are the partner of the muons. And after traveling for some distance, what you should find at the end, still a large fraction of the neutrino mu, but some of them have oscillated and has become neutrino tau. It is, real, real is, it is this thing that CERN would like to uh, demonstrate. And the point is that with the energy of the neutrino which are produced now at CERN, you need a baseline of about 700 kilometers. That's why it is foreseen to send the neutrino from the CERN to an experiment in the Grand Sasso in Italy, uh, 700 kilometers away from CERN. The neutrino will travel below the Earth and arriving somewhere here, not very far from Pisa. So the motivation of this neutrino program at CERN, called the CERN Neutrino Grand Sasso Program, is to provide an unambiguous evidence for neutrino mu becoming neutrino tau, 
so oscillations. And that will be for the first stage. In the second stage, we like to see if neutrino mu can uh, be oscillate in another type of neutrino called the neutrino E, the one which are partner of the electrons. And two big experiments are actually being prepared, which would be installed in the Gran Sasso in Italy, the Opera experiment and the uh, Icarus experiment. Just one illustration uh, of what could be this type of, uh, this type of uh, experiment. Actually, the, the detectors for neutrinos, which will be installed in the tunnel of the Grand Sasso in Italy, are much simpler than the one of the Large Hadron Collider. They are essentially for opera, uh, con they constitute of uh, lead, of uh, walls of brick leads. And inside the brick leads, you have some emulsion. So it is a very simple detector, which is act actually being installed in the tunnel of the Grand Sasso in, uh, in Italy to do this neutrino physics with a neutrino which, are, which will be produced by CERN. Let me show again, and in a more detailed way, the big accelerator complex at CERN. So you, I, I have already spoken about the PS, the SPS, the LHC, now the special beam of neutrino which is being prepared, but also from the PS, you, you can use part of the particles to do other things. For instance, to produce antiprotons and you, that you have to decelerate. It is an AD program. You could also use the booster, the one which, is, is, which inject particle to the PS, to send it to Isold, to the Isold facility, to do nuclear physics. So it is the two things I will briefly comment before concluding. Nuclear physics. Nuclear physics, all nuclei, which uh, for all nuclei, you have a number of protons, a number of neutrons, and if you make a plot for all the nuclei which are stable, uh, the number of protons versus the number of neutrons, you obtain this yellow valley, which is called the valley of stability, where you could find 250 stable nuclei. Now, since the early work of Marie Curie and uh, others, it's possible to synthesize in the laboratory artificial nuclei. So far, about 2,000 of them have been synthesized, and we think that 5,000 to 7,000 bond nuclei are expected. So why is it interesting? It is not by pure curiosity that we want to uh, know how many uh, nuclei exist, those which are stable, and those which are radioactive. It is essentially, I think there are two reasons. One is, despite it is well known since long that a nucleus is composed of neutrons and protons, we don't know really why some assembly of protons and neutrons are stable, others make some fissions, and others are completely unstable. We, finally, the complex structure of the, nuclei is, of the nucleus is something which is still perfectly unknown. There is another reason why we, there is some interest to look at these uh, many nuclei. It is because uh, we would like to understand how the heavy nuclei have been formed. In the, if you look, at, <coughs> again, imagine this axis of the protons, this axis of the neutron. In the theory of the model of the Big Bang, that certainly uh, Pierre Binetri will explain in more details, the in what has been produced after the Big Bang is, is very light nuclei. And the one which are a bit heavier has been produced then within stars or when the supernova explode. But how finally we have arrived to this production of uh, lead, of uranium, and all these heavy nuclei that we find on Earth is a succession of very complicated process called the R process, the S process, I don't want to go into detail, which at the end, each time we transform one, nuclei, one nucleus in another one. And so it is very important, and I think it is one of the basic uh, gradient or all the formation of the matter to understand what are all these steps which have led to the matter as it is at present on the Earth. Last topic, the, the anti-hydrogen production. In principle, to do anti-hydrogen is re relatively simple. You take antiprotons, so you, you produce antiprotons in your laboratory, you produce anti-electrons, which are positrons, and you bring them together, 
and they could assemble to make an atoms. But to really to have the positron captured by the antiproton, the, both the electron must have a very low speed and the antiproton must be almost at rest. And the real, the real technical challenge, in contrast to all the other activity at CERN, is not to accelerate the antiproton, but to de decelerate. Because when, when they are produced, for instance, in the PS, they have an, an energy uh, typically of one GV, kinetic energy of one GV. But what we would like is to, to cool down at the level of milli electron volt, not mega electron volt, but milli electron volt, or, and even lower. It is real, really a technical challenge, a technical challenge that the CERN has succeeded to achieve a few years ago by producing the first uh, amount of anti-hydrogen. So just, I just repeat what I say. From the, from the deceleration, you give, you start with antiprotons which have a, l a large kinetic energy. You try to arrive them at a very low kinetic energy. For the positron, it's somewhat easier because you start, for example, by positron produced by the decay of this uh, sodium-22. And <coughs> you also decelerate them by some magnetic system. You confine them and uh, you, you confine them, you decelerate, and after some time, or you produce some anti-hydrogen. It is something that we now, it is a, a steady, a regular operation, and about several hundred thousand anti-hydrogen atoms has been produced at CERN. But what we would like is not only to produce, we would like to trap them, to store them, and to make some spectroscopic measurement. Because this spectroscopic measurement and compare them with the spectroscopic measurement of the atom of hydrogen. The difference between the two would be of really uh, very fundamental nature in the understanding of particle physics and of all the basic symmetry that we have in this world of elementary particles. To conclude, what we are doing at present at CERN is the highest priority is to build, to install, and to commission the LHC experiment, the four LHC experiment, with the goal to have the first running somewhere in the mid-2007. Up to the end of this year, there were still a lively uh, fixed target program with COMPASS that I mentioned before, and also with k and heavy ions that I did not have enough time to describe. These days, and uh, yesterday uh, I was still at this workshop, and I will come back tomorrow night on it, we, we are discussing what exactly could be the fixed target program of CERN after the year 2006. What is true, on the other, on the other hand, it is that around mid-2006, there will be a neutrino beam, a new neutrino beam at CERN. This neutrino beam will be sent to the OPERA and Argus experiment. For the antiproton program, it's clear that now there have been this big success in producing anti-hydrogen. We don't know yet how to store them and to make some measurement with anti-hydrogen atoms. And depending on the idea that the people will have or the suggestion, this program will carry on or not in the later future. In parallel, and you don't see it completely here, there is this nuclear physics program which will move from Isolde to Rex Isolde and eventually later on, but after the year 2010, in a new facility called Erisol. And in parallel to all these activities, they will CERN, unfortunately, at a very modest level, is trying to, pre to prepare the technology of what could be the next step, because we already know that the Large Hadron Collider will not be the large machine that the particle physicists need and that the particle physics need by itself. And <coughs> so I don't want to go in more details, but it's an important aspect, of course, of scientific program of CERN. So my last slide. Personally, <laughs> working on this field since close to 40 years now, uh, I think that looking for the most elementary constituent of matter is absolutely fascinating. It has been, for me and for all those doing that, a kind of journey of exploration into the mystery and the beauty of the universe at the smaller scale, but as we have seen, looking at the universe at a smaller scale has a strong implication at a larger scale on all the theory of the Big Bang. Since 50 years, 
CERN has been at the forefront of international research in particle physics. And at least with the left, but already slightly before, the CERN program has really become the world leader. I think the world leader laboratory, there's no question on that at present. And, but we are convinced that with the Large Hadron Collider, this will continue, and we are also convinced the Large Hadron Collider will open a new window in particle physics and cosmology. Thank you.